G'day folks, had a couple of people ask what we've got on the hop for our autumn or fall garden and I thought I'd bring you along and just show you. Uh, firstly, uh, we have a pretty mild winter here. We only um, average about 22 degrees centigrade during winter, so it is very mild. Uh, we're in subtropical southeast Queensland here. Um, our cold mornings, we'll probably get about three or four mornings a year that would dip below freezing or zero centigrade, um, and then it pretty much all warms up within an hour or two. We don't get frost in our, on our block, but we know other people around the area that do get frost, um, so we are very lucky in that respect. I think it's got to do with the location of the shed and the property behind us fences and trees around the place so um, yeah we are very lucky just quickly too, our summer average because I know some people will ask is around about 31 degrees centigrade but it does go up a lot hotter than that um, some weeks will have around about the 40 degree mark so anyway my hands are starting to shake I'll bring you down and show you the seedlings so these are the two trays of seedlings I planted out around about four or five days ago. Um, give you a quick run through of what we've got. Um, I've got some spineless mammoth okra. Um, hopefully we've got them in early enough that we'll get a half decent crop before it gets really, really cold. I've got some um, perpetual spinach down here. I got those seeds from Ben. Thank you very much, Ben. Over the back here, I have some broccoli. Uh, that's Waltham. Uh, we've got six, but I'll probably give um, a couple away for mum and dad. Uh, what I'm trying to do with a lot of the brassicas this year, I'm trying to um, be more vigilant on my succession sowing. Uh, it's something we always practice here, but I get very lax. Um, so what I'm trying to do is start off um, four, four or so uh, of the um, brassicas. That's the mainly the cabbages and the cauliflower every couple of weeks, just so we get a progressive harvest through the system all the way through to spring. So I, some of these seedlings will end up going to my parents. So anyway, we've got the six broccoli. We've got our fifth one just popping there. Over the back here we have some cauliflower. These are a 60 day cauliflower. I'm actually going to per plant out a purple um, cauliflower as well. It's a later maturing cauliflower. So if I plant it out now, we'll have these guys first and then the um, purple afterwards. Over here we have some Chinese cabbage. They're a, um, these are actually an F1. Uh, they're a Wombok cabbage. Uh, they're a cylindrical drum style cabbage. Uh, I'm going to put these down the back. Um, they're a fast maturing cabbage. That's why I've chosen them. Normally the Wombok we grew last year took a little bit longer. So I thought I'd try the F1, just see how they go. At the front here, we're trying collards for the first time. We have Champion and Georgia Southern. So two of each because they're a progressive pick. I thought I'd try two. I think we have more than enough time that if we do like these guys, we can get another round through. So that's the, that tray. These guys started to emerge day before yesterday, so three or four days after sowing out. Over here, we've got a few different things. And this pun in here, we have some upland cress. Over here, we have some miner's lettuce. I uh, don't like my chances with that because as you can see, the surface has been disturbed. We had a thunderstorm the other day and I've just seen ants crawl out of the base of it. So there's another reason why it may not do too well. Down here, we just have some sugarloaf cabbage. It's not looking like it's a great germination rate in there at the moment. Over here, we have just turn him around so I can see. Scotch kale. So there's four scotch kale. We've got two that are germinated there. And in the front here we have some acorn squash and some angled loofah. So we'll see how they go. They're a larger seed so it may take a little bit longer to germinate. Now with this potting mix what I've used is pretty much well four parts compost. Some of our compost that I've had saved and put aside for seed raising. Uh, two parts sand. It's a coarse sand. Uh, it just makes the, the mix nice and loose and drains well so it doesn't become too waterlogged. And also one part coconut coir. <laughs> that does the reverse. That keeps a little bit of moisture in there, but the sand basically keeps it free draining enough. Um, we'll sacrifice this one, hey? It's, it's very loose, so seeds can pop through easily, and it doesn't hold on to water too long. As you can see, the trays have dried out at the moment, but it pretty much all well, every morning I come through here and put about a centimetre, um, just under a quarter of an inch worth of water in here, and that's pretty much well wicked up by the punnets. There's holes in the base, and that keeps the mix moist for the day. So that's pretty much all the seedlings we have on the go at the moment. I have some more like wing beans I really wanted to put out um, and there are a, a few other selections that I'm going to try but this is just what we've got on the hop at the moment. Down here we have a couple of Bundaberg Rumball tomatoes and my gardening knife. We better move that. Um, these guys here I transplanted them from a punnet at the same time I transplanted one into the aquaponic system. I'm not really too happy with the way they're going in this barrel. Um, I didn't feed this barrel up too much other than some compost but that was it. I really didn't want to overdo it. Um, I think there's yeah there's definitely something in here that these plants don't like too much. Just disturbed a worm. 
Uh, over in this one we have some volunteer purse lane and I also have some golden purse lane. This is a broader leaf one, a cultivated variety. It's not doing too well in here where the wild one is. So um, yeah, it's just interesting little comparison there. Over here there was another one, but it definitely isn't looking too good. Down here we have some volunteer tomatoes, which I dare say will turn up being uh, the yellow cherry tomatoes we have. Up the back here we have a tomato that Richard th sent me, thank you very much. Um, John Burgess posted a picture of his, how well it was doing. Um, I'm not going to attempt to say the name. Um, so yeah, Richard said he had seeds and he sent me some, so they're flying along at the moment. It's actually doing really well. When it came into the barrel, there was two of them. One of them's died off, but this basically had that little gnarled section, that leaf, and this leaf, and it was looking rather sickly. But in the last week or so, it's definitely picked up. Um, this is an old carrot barrel, by the way. Over here is my other carrot barrel. Uh, now, it has got a fair few weeds in it. Um, I have a feeling a lot of these guys here are little weed seeds. Some of them are am amaranth. Um, it looks like we have one tomato that might have popped up, but I've only planted him out the other day, so I'm not expecting any carrots yet. Hopefully by Monday we'll have something, but it definitely does look like we're going to have heaps of amaranth seeds come up through here. I'll just weed them out and feed them to the chooks. Um, basically what I've done is just made a nice loose soil mix with um, mixed in the reservoir sand that was in this barrel with the soil, mixed it through, made it a little bit lighter, so hopefully the roots will go down nice and deep, but it doesn't look like any carrots have popped oh maybe maybe one maybe two um there, it's a mix of some seeds that nathan sent me from up north thank you mate some um purple carrots and also um along the front here are seeds from kira's carrot um from out the front that um flowered last year now only one flower um bloomed at the time or one carrot bloomed at the time it had hundreds of flowers on it but um, yeah, so the genetic diversity won't be in these seeds to keep them strong after generation after generation. So we'll, we'll grow one crop, see what they're like, and if they're any good, we'll keep using those seeds. Over here under the Moringa tree, I planted out some brain tomatoes. So they were gifted um, from a friend on Facebook as well. So thank you very much. Um, they're doing rather well. I've also got Nathan's um, Mexican midget tomatoes going out the front, but I won't run out there at the moment. Um, the traffic's starting to um, get a little bit busy this afternoon. Just down here at the aquaponics, I did have some ice plant seeds on the go. Um, Stephen, an Instagram mate, shared with me. Um, unfortunately, they just haven't made it. I don't know if it's too hot at the moment. Um, I had about three germinate and they just keeled over, so I'm pretty much all the seed I've saved. I have got enough to do a couple more sowings just to see how they go. Um, that seed I'll put aside and I'll throw that in when the weather cools down a little bit more. Up the back here we have some sweet potato slips that came out of that car carrot barrel I just showed you. These guys are basically just sections of um, growth that I broke off the rhizomes. There's a couple of rhizomes in there and I'm trying to grow them, get a couple of roots on them and then I'll pop them in around different places in the garden. I think these guys are the Okinawan purple um, sweet potato. I can't quite remember what I had in there. Just here at the aquaponic beds, I've got a couple of tomatoes on the go. I think that's a summertime gold. I'm not too sure. Dwarf tomato. Um, I've just popped him into a um, one gallon or four litre root pouch in there. He's planted a little bit low so as he grows I'll just put some clay balls in there. Um, uh, snap off the leaves. Tomatoes don't mind that. They'll just send out new roots. I've got some thyme here. Uh, these are seedlings. The thyme, some basil and some parsley are seedlings I actually bought from a store. So they're in there. Um, just a bit of a head start because I had nothing to plan out in here to begin with. Around the outside I've got um, a run of Kira's carrot seeds. So we'll see how they go in here. Over the back there a rescue capsicum that still doesn't look too good. He's got some mite damage in there so I need to wipe over the leaves with a bit of a um, insecticidal soap. Not something I spray around the aquaponics, um, just something I wipe over leaves. A turmeric, um, I was mucking around with getting some turmeric out for dinner the other night and this bit broke off. Had some roots on it so I popped them in there, see how it goes. Just down here we have the other Bundaberg Rumble Tomato. Um, this is another dwarf tomato. It's the same as those ones I showed you in that wicking barrel earlier definitely put on a lot more growth in here than the plants in the soil. Um, they've been in for the same amount of time, they were planted out the same day, a couple of minutes apart, so definitely a lot better growth in the aquaponics I think. Just over here in this ginger and kangkong barrel, I also um, planted out a, a weak little seedling that I didn't think was going to make it in the next lot of plants I'm going to show you. I've just popped him straight in here. This is a constant flow through um, barrel. There's just holes in this pipe and it drips through and comes out the drain pipe there. Um, sort of like a Dutch bucket and yeah this tomato's taken off it's really liked it in there so pretty happy about that. 
just in the main patch here and this is our what we're calling our snake bean um, bed at the moment it's got some great looking snake beans on it um, this bed we pretty much will just let lay fallow over um, summer we didn't really have much growing on in here we just let the marigolds go but I planted out some more of those dwarf tomatoes and we have three we have one two and three in the center I've just planted them in there they're going to be the main crop hopefully in here I'm actually going to bring down the um, the netting so the cabbage butterflies don't get in here around the edge there I just planted out some more sweet basil just a leftover from the punnet and three lots of parsley up the end there strangely enough tomatoes do better in the aquaponics but the parsley likes the um, soil beds a lot better and these guys like the basil a lot better when it's grown in the soil so feed him to the chooks if I can catch him um, yeah so and oh just down the edge here we have some thyme just some more of that thyme seems to be going as well as the stuff in the aquaponics so that's pretty much all, all the seedlings I've planted out for now this is the bed where the brassicas will probably end up going in um, I've changed my mind again I was going to pull this out I've mentioned it in clips and blogs sorry guys um, you know the wind changes and I changed my mind um, I've decided to leave it for now mainly because I'm doing a PDC and I really don't want to make too many big moves and changes in the garden um, until I finish up the course, design a couple of bits and pieces for other uh, folks, get some experience and then I'll decide what's going to go on with this part of the garden down here. Uh, I did mention that we were having issues with this bed not holding water but I think if I'm a bit diligent and do a lot of top watering rather than using the reservoir I should be able to bring uh, a couple of crops off to harvest in this bed here. I think I missed some potatoes when I did the harvest clip, so we've got some potatoes coming through there. A uh, bit of a bonus harvest, we'll just see what they give us. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all it. Just quickly, yesterday after I finished the clip, I received a parcel from Nathan, cheers mate, of ice cream bean tree pods. Now an ice cream bean tree is a leguminous tree that helps to fix nitrogen into the soil. One of the main uses of it is as a chop and drop crop tree. That basically means you're chopping off the branches and laying them on the ground as a mulch. They break down and feed the soil. Um, I'm going to be using it similar. I'll be chopping off the branches and adding them into the compost bin. Now the seeds themselves are surrounded by like a ball of fluff, a wet fairy floss, uh, very sweet uh, in flavour. And inside of there is the actual bean seeds. We were lucky enough to have three beans that had already started to germinate within the pods. So I just threw them in... Um, some compost that we had some coarse sand mixed through it as well and just put them in a root pouches here so these guys hopefully will do really well and we'll get them in the ground and we'll start to coppice them and turn them into um, compost for the patch so there you go folks there's a bit of a look at what we're planning out at the moment um, just for some people uh, the tomatoes here we get hit by fruit fly during summer pretty badly uh, we lost a lot of the mangoes and a whole heap of chilies to them this year um, so winter is our best opportunity to grow full-size fruiting fleshy tomatoes so that's why I've got a few around the place I'm trying out the dwarf varieties just to see how they go um, yeah so I'm pretty happy with what's going on in the patch at the moment and what we've got planned so something I've always found a little bit funny is what I'm growing now is what a lot of my mates overseas who are into gardening on YouTube are starting to sow uh, particularly uh, Europe uh, the UK which is in Europe uh, Canada um, the northern states in the United States um, places like that you guys are starting to get your brassicas and tomatoes and all that on the hop so what I thought I'd do is just shoot you over to Stephen in Canada uh, he's from the uh, Alberta Urban Garden Channel and he's just going to do a bit of a run through of the plants that he's got on the go at the moment or getting ready for spring at least hey Rob thanks for having me on your program it's definitely not as warm here in Canada as it is in Australia but we've started some seedlings inside to get ready for our impending summer season. So why don't we go on inside and check out what we've got growing. Hey Rob, it's a little warmer inside. So I start my seedlings in here underneath uh, fluorescent light bulbs and it, that's for one reason. It's the easiest way that I can start them in the house and heating a greenhouse outside is uh, in our brutal winters here in uh, Alberta, Canada. It's a little too cold to be doing that and it takes a lot of effort and you, you end up losing a bunch of stuff. So uh, often what I'll do is I'll grow some herbs in here like this um, this English thyme here and, and this basil over winter and, and when uh, the season comes these get planted outside and they'll produce for me uh, all summer and obviously die when we get our first snowfall. 
The plants that I like to start in here are my, my more tropical plants like peppers and tomatoes. So um, for peppers I start them quite early. These ones were started in December I think of this year and the reason for the peppers to start in December is because I do uh, a pruning method to them and it takes a little time. Peppers are a little slower to get going especially underneath uh, grow lights. I do produce winter tomatoes. These are just my little sweet and neat, my favorite ones that my son and I love to snack on. Uh, they're like a little winter project. The lights are on anyways. They're not being completely used by the peppers. So I, uh, I produce these little tomatoes just to maximize what I'm using. Uh, they're done producing. So I'll pull them out here in the next couple of weeks and, and replace them with my tomato seedlings that I'll actually use outside. In previous years underneath this setup I've started things like my goji berry plants and some of my strawberry varieties. It's really a great way to get perennials going that um, you can start from seed or, or from cuttings. Uh, give them a head start into our short season because remember I only have about 120-125 day season. If I'm lucky I get you know a third of the year to grow. Unlike the beautiful tropics where it's your winter and you're starting to grow some of my summer crops in your winter. But the benefit I have here is that snow you saw earlier, it takes care of all sorts of pests. They simply can't live here because they can't handle the winter. So I do have it a little bit easier on the pest front, but uh, ooh, growing 12 months a year, that would be a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on, Rob. I appreciate it. Now back to you in Australia. Thanks for that, Stephen. Oh, I thought it'd just be an interesting contrast between what we're planning now in the subtropics as to what you guys are planning up there in Canada at the moment, getting ready for spring. So anyway, I'll pretty much we'll leave it there. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Other than that, I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic one. You're getting all your starts ready out in the patch, whether you're here in southeast Queensland where it's nice and warm, sorry Melbourneites, or over overseas in the northern hemisphere getting your spring ones ready so i'll stop babbling on cheers guys have a great one